Hey y'all, I'm Courtney. And I'm Sarah. And this is Vada Stiblers. The podcast where we read all the books we used to steal off our grandmother's nightstands. And then we drink about it. yippee ki yay, romance lovers. Here to tell you about Kensington's newest book, If the Boot Fits. This is the second in the Cowboys of California series. From award-winning author Rebecca Weatherspoon comes a thoroughly modern take on the timeless tale of a struggling Cinderella who finds her prince charming at the 11th hour and the adventure that ensues the morning after. Working as the personal assistant to one of Hollywood's cruelest divas has left Amanda Queen more determined than ever to sell her screenplay and gain her independence. In the meantime, she'll settle for a temporary escape. When her employer is felled by the flu on Hollywood's biggest night of the year, Amanda gets her glam on, struts out the door, and parties with the glitterati. But she never expects to come face-to-face and closer than close with one of the hottest stars in the game. Following up his first Oscar win with the steamy after-hours romp with an enigmatic woman seems like the perfect way for actor Sam Pleasant to celebrate. Until she suddenly disappears. Worse, she's vanished with the wrong swag bag, the one containing his Oscar statue, leaving Sam even more intrigued about the beauty's identity and wondering if a repeat performance of their amazing night is in the stars. And when a second chance encounter happens, only a trip to Sam's family ranch and revealing the whole, not always glamorous truth about themselves will give them a chance to turn one magical night into forever. So Sarah and I both adore Rebecca Weatherspoon, and if you haven't read any of her books, you should definitely pick this one up. Um, I love her writing. I love that she kind of plays with gender norms, and I've read her book, The Wraith, A Buff Male Nanny, and a couple of other ones, and she is great, so I can highly recommend her. She's also a delight on Twitter, so you should follow her. So pick this up wherever you get your books. On this episode, we read Selena Montgomery's Secrets and Lies. Of course, Selena Montgomery is also Stacey Abrams. Um, This is mostly fine for anybody who uh, reads romantic suspense. It does have some torture and murder that happens off screen. Uh, It also has glamping, fake South American countries, ethnobotany. uh, (laughs) So much ethnobotany. Um, (laughs) Well, there's also the discussion of the genocide of South American peoples. Yes. Um, you know, a long time ago. Also, a, a bunker. If bunkers trigger you, there's a bunker. <laughs> but it's a very um, well-lit bunker. There's also a cave, though, although no cave fucking. No, no. I was just they, that. They almost cave fuck there. They think about it. Yeah. There's cave eye fucking, but mm. no no penetration in the cave. Just There's just also a, a lot that. of instant oatmeal. <laughs> So much instant oatmeal. Oh, like, they're in South America, and these people are just eating instant oatmeal. God. I know. They could be getting like, all this amazing food, and they're eating instant oatmeal all the time. So <laughs> much instant oatmeal. Um, so, yeah, that was that's really the trigger warnings for it. I think, you know, other than the the light murder, um, also a guy getting shot in the kneecap, that was that, you know. But he had it coming, that, though. He did have it coming. So, yes, we have chosen, and it was on the behest of some of our listeners who said, hey, you guys should do a Selena Montgomery book because Stacey Abrams is trying to save the country single-handedly. And here's the thing, like, maybe we should stop giving black women more work to do and just, like, buy the stuff that they've done. So you should go buy a Selena Montgomery book and give Stacey Abrams some of your dollars because she's working her ass off for everybody. Um, Instead of just, like, giving her, like, more keys. Like, they're not going to give exactly. her, like, a job with, like, like better oh, yeah. stuff. Just more keys. <laughs> and um, it's Thanksgiving. And we wanted to give thanks to somebody who's yeah. worked extremely hard for a country that does not deserve her. Exactly. So, in addition to buying her books, you guys should definitely go and check out um, her organization, the Fair Fight Action, um, which is helping, you know, to stop voter suppression um and also go and donate to you know the georgia runoffs because that really could change the entire face of the next four years next six years um so and i know yeah, we have a so, lot of georgia listeners so y'all y'all go vote <laughs> i yeah. mean y'all already know so, that, but just a reminder just go vote so yes yeah, stacy abrams American politician, lawyer, voting right activist, and author. She served in the Georgia House of Representatives from 2007 to 2017. She served as a minority leader from 2011 to 2017. Um, She's a member of the Democratic Party, 
And she was the nominee for the Georgia gubernatorial election, becoming the first African-American major party nominee in the United States. She lost to Brian Kemp. And in February 2019, she was the first African-American woman to deliver a response to the State of the Union address. Now, she is, I believe, Yale educated. Um, watch her be Harvard and it's going to be like, you got it wrong. Ooh, no. She went to Spelman. She went to Spelman and then University of Texas at Austin and then Yale. Um, so many romance authors are lawyers and it's awesome. Yeah, so, which has been delightful, by the way, in, in recent days because I follow a lot of them yeah. on Twitter and they have they have notes. <laughs> I do. So from about 2001 and 2009, um, she wrote several books, several romance, kind of romance thrillers under the name Selena Montgomery. And we chose the book Secret and Lies, which came out in December of 2006. And it's through Avon. Um, let me get to the, sorry, everyone. Y'all, it's finals. And our library is doing these 24 hour hours because what you want in COVID is to be around a bunch of nasty, don't know how to wear their mask, right? Kids, even more hours. So I'm sort of brain dead. Um, okay. About this book. She may be smart and beautiful, but she also is standing between him and a very lucrative item he needs to recover. And this African-American love story that blends passion with action that is sure to thrill romance readers. She just witnessed her, un her uncle's murder. She's running for her life. And now Dr. Catlin Lita is face to face with a breathtaking man who could be her salvation. Tall, sexy, his eyes full of mysterious promise. He seems to have an answer, have the answer she needs. It's too bad Sebastian Kane is one of the bad guys. A recovery specialist skilled at separating prized possessions from their owners, Sebastian is after an ancient relic, but he reconsiders the job when he finds himself staring at the wrong end of a gun. The beautiful lady with her finger on the trigger seems to have everything he needs, not just the artifact. Sebastian's conscience has never bothered him before, but then he's never wanted any woman more. With her life in jeopardy, Kat wonders how far she can trust Sebastian Kane. How long can she resist him? And dare she fall in love? So, and this is available on your Kindle e-reader for like four bucks. Go give Selena Montgomery, a.k.a. Stacey Abrams, your money. So, um, <clears throat> let's get started. Oh, I did realize say, you're not drinking, but, but I am. And I am okay. drinking kind of seasonal... Um, I've got two sour beers. Um, so I've got a Westbrook Grandma's Apple Pie Goza. Apple Pie. Apple Pie. Um, so that's kind of Christmassy. And then this Edmunds Oast, which is a great brewery, Sour Cranberry Lime, which is very limey. Very, very limey. But anyway, so um, they're both quite good. FYI. Yes, I am. I am not drinking because I have to be up at five o'clock in the morning. So, um, and also I'm so tired that I think if I had like a glass of wine, I'd just be like half, like half asleep and Sarah would just have to do the rest of it. Um, which is Sarah's, she's like, finally, my time has yes. come. Courtney so can't stop. stop waving their hands at me to stop talking. <laughs> it's my dream. Um, so I guess before we get into this, like, you are, are you watching anything other than like the insanity that is, you know, post election and everything else? I'm I'm doom scrolling and also like homeschooling. But um, oh oh, I yeah. did just read something fun. I I uh, finally got around. You know, Mira Grant is also Shauna McGuire. Her um, Wayward Children books, but I had not read her um, Bloodthirsty Killer Mermaid books. And That's um, fun. yeah yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. It's um oh god, Into the Drowning Deep. Is the first one, okay. and uh, it's super fun. And the mermaids are super murdery. It does take a little bit to get to the murdery mermaids, but once the mermaids start eating people, it goes like, "Wow, it's super, yeah, it's, it's great." I really enjoyed it a lot, and I do think a lot of our readers would like it. Huh. What are you? Reading? I have been. I'm. Just, my brain can't handle any more books right now. I've been watching. I watched um, the Queen's Gambit, which I think everybody else has watched. Um, we it's haven't gotten about, to it yet. It's like we we want to, but we just haven't I, I really enjoyed it. And then I'm um it's about, you know, it's chess in the nineteen fifties and sixties and it's very fun. And Anna Taylor Joy, who is amazing in the witch, she's so good in it, and it's got all these 
like the kid from Harry Potter, Dudley Dursley, all grown up, and then it's got you know little Jojen Reed from Game of Thrones all grown up, and that's kind of wild. But it's a really good series. Um, I would suggest it. And then I'm also watching The Undoing with Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant and Donald Sutherland, and that is a wild ride, and I've been enjoying it. Like it's Hugh Grant being like super smarmy, and it's perfect. So check those out. All right. So we're going to jump into Selena Montgomery's Secrets and Lies. And I feel like that this, before, like, I do think that this is probably like the third in a series. Yeah, I was going to start off with that telling people because you only find at the end that like there's these other couples who show up yeah. at the very end and you're obviously supposed to know who they are and be excited to see them. <laughs> so it's yeah. like that. But it's, it's not, uh, you know, like, it's not like when we did Dreaming where all of a sudden in the middle of the book, you're, you know, taken to this whole new group of people. It's not until the end, and it's not obtrusive in any way. No, it's just the, um, the way that you often see when, like, a romance novel yeah. series, they're usually not really a series series. They're just, like, um, you know, cameos happen from other people. Yeah, yeah. it's like, hey, it's that guy. Um, like, oh, hi. <laughs> so the book opens, we have Sebastian Kane, who is a recovery specialist, a.k.a., like, high-end thief. He's a cat um, burglar. Yeah, he's a cat burglar. Yeah. But he steals like ancient, you know, he's it, like he, he takes relics. Um, and then it opens with him skulking around in this kind of villa, in this very well appointed villa in somewhere in Central America. And he's on this job. It's his, it's his last job before retirement. You know, it's always that. It's always like that one last job. Um, and he comes across this dying man. And it's this guy, he, like he knows him. Um, they actually have a weird relationship. They have a ha ha, I stole it from you this time. <laughs> like kind yeah. of <laughs> <laughs> they kind of have a professional yes. relationship with one another. <laughs> yes. And so like, you know, as the as this man is dying, he's like, he keeps talking about cat. He keeps saying cat, cat, I need you to protect cat. I need you to save cat. And Sebastian's like, okay, I'll find your cat. You know, and he keeps asking, he's like, who did this to you? And the the old man is, as he's dying, just keeps talking about cat. So after he, he, after the, the guy bleeds out, he's been stabbed. Sebastian's still skulking around trying to find this ancient manuscript. Can't find it. And Around that time, the police show up. So he's like, oh, I got a jet. Now, I don't really understand how some of the pacing in this is strange. So I don't, the next thing you kind of know is that he has found this woman. Well, she found Cat. him. Well, okay. So first yeah. of all, he um, when he's walking into the house, he hears somebody leaving. So that's why he's on like high alert. Um, yeah. And, and he assumes that she killed What's his name? Um, so what? How, how he finds her is that she the shoots uncle. his tires yeah. out. <laughs> like, like he's following yeah. okay. um, the tire tracks from her okay. car, and she is evidently like doubled back, and and she shoots his tires out. Um, uh, and you never see her with a gun. I think for the rest of the book, I don't think. But um, and so and then like they they have like their their big kind of like confrontation, and they both had the wrong idea about each other because he thinks that she killed what's his name, and she thinks that, that he well no he does, she knows that he didn't kill her, but I forget they both think each other are assholes, but it doesn't like stick for very long. Um, and it turns out that we know eventually through her eyes that she took the um, oh what is it the um forgot the name of it kinchona it was a kinchona right um but then we don't know what that is or anything about it it's just yeah, it's, it's, yeah we just know it's very old and very valuable and, and sebastian has been, we know it's a document yes so yes cat cat caitlin so we figure out that the cat that he's talking about is not a agata it's actually her catlin caitlin we're gonna call her cat um so he realizes that this must be who he's talking about, and he thinks that she has murdered, you know, she has murdered her uncle, and that she thinks that he works with the men that she saw murder her uncle. Um, so they're kind of at a standoff for the first, you know, 12 hours, and then they're in this sexy cave. <laughs> and she's been and she has, in a sexy has, cave. And either she's a really good packer or she, her glamping skills are like amazing or what, because she has a lot of shit in this case. <laughs> she's got tons of reading material. She had material. like a Hermione Granger bag is what she had. Like she <laughs> yeah. just kept pulling stuff out of this bag. Um, you know, they're doing the thing where it's like, he's got the, you know, 
she's got the gun, but he's got a knife and she's in over her head and all this kind of stuff. And they're just kind of, you know, feeling each other out, but also, you know, I fucking at the same time. Oh yeah. There's definitely a scene where she has to like look in his pockets. (laughs) Yes. He's wearing. Yeah. (laughs) It's like that. Yeah, right. she, she, she totally does some grab ass on him because he takes her passport and she she just like throws herself at him and is goosing she him. Palms his um, dick. I mean, that is like I, I honestly yeah. think that when you've got like some dude tied up and a gun held to him, you should not palm his dick. That's like rule number one about kidnapping. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, that's just that's just manners. Yeah, like that's just manners. Uh, <laughs> you just you know if you're gonna tie somebody up and palm their dick you need to <laughs> ask them first right. um right. he did not he clearly did not mind though no, and, you no, know it's one was, of those things that. That they're very like he's they're always kind of one step ahead of each other you know he knows that she must have the 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 Tachina or the whatever. I'm just going to call it the, the manuscript because yes, I'm so that's tired. better because I can't remember what, what it's actually yeah, called. Yeah, he knows that she has the manuscripts and that she must have squirreled it away somewhere and that she's obviously familiar with the area and he's just waiting for her to go get it. You know, she knows that he knows that she knows, you know, it's one of those. Um, yeah, so I thought finally, it was going to be an idiot plot and it never is. It's actually both people who are quite smart. Yes, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, like, it's, it's very, you know, kind of competency porn and, you know, that there's none of that dumbassery that happens. Um, so they decide to, you know, she, she kind of tell, she lies to him and says that the thing that he's looking for is this ancient diary. Not to be confused with the manuscript. We've got a diary and we've got a manuscript. Um, and that the diary leads them to ancient ink and gold. You know, and he's like, this is a line of bullshit, but okay. You know, because it's just like, oh, it's written in this very rare space, you know, like ancient Spanish. And he's like, I can read that too, but I'm not going to tell you. Um, <laughs> well, he can read antique <laughs> Spanish, but he can't read uh, Quecha. So, yeah. But so with so, the actual manuscript is written, I, I, I don't know. Like, how can you read ancient, like 18th century well, I don't know. <laughs> she's an ethnobotanist. She's not a linguist. She's not like a, um, you know. Yeah, yeah she's, <laughs> yeah. she's an ethnobotanist. Well, yeah. I mean, you found out like her parents are, her parents are world travelers and she has this very kind of bohemian, like, you know, existence before she moves to New York where she just eth- ethnobotanies. Uh, so... And then this, you know, her uncle that, you know, was murdered, she went and spent, like, every summer with him, and they're, like, it's her favorite uncle. And you do see, like, you know, she eventually, they kind of come to an understanding with each other, and she tells him about watching her uncle be murdered, and you get a person actually dealing with trauma. And we'll talk about that, I guess, more in questions. Um, Yeah. So... They kind of come to this understanding where, you know, she tells him that, you know, he's going along with it that they're going to go and find this, you know, ink and gold. And he's like, okay, sure. So they decide to team up. They have a little bit of a team up and they go back to. And they did turn tables a couple times. Like they, you know, like, uh, like he gets the knife and like, there's that, some of that business, you know, and, but no, that people come after them. Like that somebody picks up the trail and they get shot at. It's a very romancing this land situation. So they go back to the villa and she's looking around, um, trying to find information about this, you know, this ancient secret. And then you, what you in- eventually find out is that the manuscript has, it's, it's, it's written from the manuscript was written in like the 16th century by the Spanish monk, who had come and, you know, watched a bunch of people get murdered and it was terrible. And he's like, Oh, I don't, I don't like this. So he like pieces out and he goes to this tribe and it's a, you know, fictional tribe, the Matumbo tribe where he goes and lives and learns the secrets of their like botany ways. And with them, he discovers that they actually have the elixir of life. So we're going back to bloodline where we have, (laughs) The potential for a drug that will just cure anything. Um, and so, while they're like skulking think, away, Yeah, there's an evil pharmaceutical company in this that I have to assume is the company from, what, Rolf and Sons from Bloodline? 
Like, I like to think that everything is connected. Mm -hmm. Everything's in the same universe, even um, Warrior's Woman. Yes. <laughs> um, so that would mean that this made up South American country is the same place where the lady from the Ivory Key got held hostage. Yes, it's also it all... the same place where that dude in Ghost of a Chance like got his filaria. It all happened here. It all happened in the same place. The Stacey, uh, Stacey Abrams, aka Selena Montgomery, she knew. She's this book yeah. is the touchstone. Like it is, it is the the, the key to everything. So she realizes, you know, what she has while they're they're skulking around back in the villa, and that's when you get the. The people who murdered her uncle, they show back up. And, you know, there's a there's a shootout. It's very harrowing. And they end up finding a secret, like, there's a bunker in the house. There's a Well, that happens lab. later. No, no, no. That's after. Okay, so they run away from the cave. And they end up in, like, a resort town. So there's this whole thing about there's only one bed. But oh, nobody yeah. sleeps in it anyway. And and there's this like whole thing with him oh, like oh, putting yeah. out like ways to know if if somebody's been there. But they got yeah. followed there, and then like um, uh, he's in communication with like his the, like the, the the person who has contracted him to steal this thing, and she obviously doesn't trust him at all, which is why these dudes are after him. And like he she thinks that he is flipped, and yeah, so she sent uh, another team. So yeah, she sent another team, and also they told the um, authorities that Cat and Sebastian murdered their uncle. So the cops are after them now. Oh yeah, too. yeah. So then they double yeah. back and they go back to, um, uh, I guess the lady who who cleaned for the uncle. I think like um, is that what her role was? Uh, uh, like who was a, a, a close friend, like an older woman, close yeah, friend of uh, of Cat. She was a family friend that, you know, she had had a romantic past with the uncle and then got married or, and then, like, was his house cleaner. Um, Just so like you do. <laughs> there's a lot happening. Like, this is a book where a lot happens and nothing happens in a way. Yeah. So I think that's, I always have a harder time with the plot of these shorter books than I do with, like, <laughs> the longer ones. Yeah. Um, but so, so anyway, they have somebody else now that they had to worry about. Like, except they don't because yeah. she can totally take care of her own ass. But if she gives oh, them yeah. some background. And then when they leave her, and like this is when the cops are after them and they're all running around. And I will give you $10 if you can give me a timeline and a map of this book because it does not, you know. Um, That's it's the other a little thing confused. The is so off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't but know so, if this happened. I don't know if this book happened in. Two days or 20 days. I have There's no a point idea. where Kat says to Sebastian's face, oh, well, when I saw that last night, like, meaning my uncle, my uncle got mur murdered, and I was like, oh, you did not. And I had to think for a while, like, no, you didn't, because this happened. <laughs> I don't think it was last night. <laughs> They're working on those 84-hour days that I'm, I'm working on now, and you are too. You know what? <laughs> That's the other thing. Time does not exist. You know what? They're also, the Central American country is also the kitchen, where yeah. what's-her-face... The, what was that old lady's name? In the, oh, I can't the, think of it. In it, the it, was like a, it was such an old lady name. It, was like, it wasn't like Billy or Dickie or as one of those. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like where time doesn't exist. So there's a lot of running around. Um, but so anyway, after they leave this older woman's house, the um those people come after her because of course they think oh well we're gonna use her as leverage and make sure we get that we're gonna kidnap her oh no 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 she blows one of their kneecaps off it's great <laughs> like it's a yeah. great scene so we have um, okay and then after have, that that's when they go back to the house hold on so we have yeah we have okay so we have Cat and Sebastian um Sebastian's after the book. Cat is the in the niece slash ethnobotanist slash linguist slash just genius. Then we have and, and Sebastian was hired by this woman named Helen who works for a pharmaceutical company. Then we have this team of three guys, Enzo, Tiru, and Raphael, who are also hired by Helen because Helen doesn't trust Raphael. And those three are the ones that killed um, the uncle. And they're, you know, kind of the more bloodthirsty. Sebastian has a rule about no murder, you know, so that lets us know. And, and, and now that makes sense. Why would you hire a cat burglar if you also hired a bunch of killers? Like, wouldn't you go well, to one approach really good at her? No, and her farmer's she's not good at going under, herself. so she's not good at that. Yeah, yeah, she kind of sucks. Yeah. 
Um, she walks into a really so, yeah, obvious we, trap at the end, too. <laughs> we end up in this, you know, we end up back at the villa. We end up in the secret bunker slash lab where... By this point, she has told him. Bookcase. It has a secret bookcase entrance, and I do love a secret bookcase entrance. Yes. <laughs> she ends up telling him about what the manuscript is, so that it's this, like, you know, basically it's this detailed listing of all these ancient plants that are, you know, in this por- part of Central America, and it has, like, the beginnings of this, like, elixir of life. Um, and her uncle had been working on trying to process it to create essentially the drug that's in bloodline <laughs> and you know cat who again is an ethnobotanist she's apparently also a chemist uh, and can like you know just whip up a pharmaceutical real quick yeah. so she's in this they're in this lab locked up together and this lab slash bunker you know walking around in in scrubs and scrubs are all sexy Meanwhile, on each other a pack of killers just on the other side of a bookcase, which, yeah, he disabled, and it's got a metal door, but they know they're there. <laughs> like, do they They never, like, yeah. look for the other entrance yeah, they're or, or like, anything? They're completely safe. <laughs> it's wild. So, you know, she's, she's working hard, you know, all of a sudden, again, doing chemistry and making this basically all she becomes sean connery from fucking medicine man and like, just starts whipping up like the cure for all drugs well and, it's easier you know, to do that if you don't have to test it on anybody or ever prove that it works oh my god yeah i was like so and, and sebastian's like oh she's hot I'm, I'm i'm into it so they eventually fuck it out on a on a cot it's fine you know yeah, it's fine and then after and like meanwhile, like angry uh, abuela, <laughs> like who just blew yeah, up over his meanwhile, kneecap, because yeah. she knows all about this. <laughs> meanwhile, abuelita had been blowing off kneecaps and like busting down doors. Yeah. It comes in and it's like, hey, get up! People are trying to murder me, and you two are fucking. We don't have time. <laughs> so they find out that the uncle had had this safe deposit box that has a map to the their, the uncle's plan was to create the drug that the ancient priest or the ancient monk had taken this information from this tribe to to create the drug and then give it back to the tribe and you know cat's gonna fulfill his wishes and sebastian's like okay um fine yeah, he, he wants to like expiate his sins i guess kind of because like the uncle did all this stealing and stuff too and you know, yeah. of course, and, and uh, of course, everybody stole everything from from the tribe as well. You know, they, they talk a lot about Pizarro yeah. in this book, but um, and so the uncle had been okay. He wasn't just like a, a dude who stole a lot of uh, ancient artifacts and also made medicine. He, he had been in med school, um, <laughs> and then his parents died, so he had to quit med school. But so he'd been in contact with um his old buddy from med school who was at the National Institutes of Health about this yeah. thing. And this dude is trying to sell this to pharmaceutical companies, which is how all this started and ever got everybody murdered. So this dude, um, who was his contact at um, at the National Institutes of Health, also gets murdered. Uh, but um, Sebastian is able to like track their email. So he's got a little more um, understanding about what the fuck is going on here. I mean, I'm glad he does because I'm still like half in the fucking dark <laughs> about it. Like, because I'm like, what the fuck? All right, so they decide to go and like, to, you know, the Abu- Abuelita shows up, you know, she's like, stop fucking, we gotta go, you know, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, by the way, he had a safe deposit box, and I'm pretty sure that there's a map to get to this, you know, ancient tribe, let's go, <laughs> so they get to the, they go into town, we're in another town, and she's like, hey, she's looking at Kat, she's like, this tribe, they're old fashioned, so you gotta put on a dress. There's so we a, have a shopping dress. scene. Yeah, there's a shopping <laughs> scene. So she puts on just like a contemporary dress, and you know, Sebastian's like, Yeah, I like it. I'm buying it. And this is, you know, all the time he's doing this whole thing of like, I'm no good. Don't fall in love with me. I'll just break your heart. And she's like, You're full of shit. You love me. You care about me. You know, and that was refreshing to see. And again, we'll talk more about that with questions, but. So they go and they go into this, the bank and not only like, this is also what's wild is that the uncle didn't just have a safe deposit box. He had like a whole room 
of yeah, shit. Yeah, he owns a vault of... And I mean, that's the so, thing about people who do illegal shit. They don't usually put all their illegal shit in a bank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in a bank vault, it's kind of like... It's kind of like that tomb scene in The Mummy. It's like all of a sudden there's all this gold and, you know, like all these ancient treasures and they... They just care about what's in the fucking safe deposit box, which is a shit ton of money, some diamonds, and a map. And I'm like, take the get the take the diamonds. That old man, he's dead. You take it. So <laughs> they get the map. All the while, you know, Sebastian's having to deal with Helen, who is threatening to kill Cat. You know, if he doesn't give her the information that he needs, and it's one of these, oh, is it a double cross or is he, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, and he's trying to convince her that, like, um, uh, he's happy that he that she walked in on one of these conversations because he wants to drive her yes. away. And also, he's not good enough for her and all that. And she is too smart to buy that shit. So good on her. Yeah. But, yeah, it's that whole, like, um, what he, he, all of a sudden, he's keeping secrets from you, the reader, you know. Yeah. And, and then he's got a plan. Oh, Lord. So they get to, they go to the, the tribe, which, like, the way that this setup was set up was, like, you felt like it was, like, one of these, like, super isolated tribes, you know? And it's just, like, a dude who's the mayor. Yeah. And he's, <laughs> it was like, so they're just in a town. Like, they're yeah. in a town. They're not in, like, some tribe. And I mean, they had the to guys, get there by boat. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, but that but, is like, most people i mean most people are not like an uncontacted like there's people they, in the sentinel islands yeah. who just like put spears into planes you know yes, most, it, most most hunter gatherer tribes are yeah they have like shirts i know but it <laughs> felt like i mean the way that it was described though was you gotta admit like the way that it was described mm -hmm. was like this lost tribe um it wasn't lost so, at all there's nobody bothered to call them yeah yeah so, so they are very poor and they could definitely use a um checks notes pharmaceutical company yeah, so they show up, and the guy's like, you know, they heard that they were very hostile to outsiders, and they get there, and the guy's like, hey, what's up? And they're like, oh, yeah, we got your old, we got your old books here, and we got your drug. And they're like, all right, what, what do you want? And they're like, nothing. We're just here to bring it. And the guy's like, okay. Um, like, I'm taking so, my lab, right? I mean, like, <laughs> so Sebastian has come up with this plan because, you know, Helen has threatened Kat and it's a thing of like, I won't kill her tomorrow or even, you know, a month from now, it'll be years and she'll be gardening and then I'll just kill her. And Which is so, chilling, I have to say. Like, I always, always appreciate that kind of threat, you know? Yeah. Well, it, the whole the I, point yeah. is not that, like, you're... The, the actual killing, it's about fear, which I've always, I don't know, yeah. I think it's pretty good. So he like, calls You don't even have to do it. You have to pay for it. You just put it in their heads. He calls up his old buddies from, like, books four and five, like, you know, one through three. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're back at the villa. We're in this villa all the goddamn time. Like, that's where we are, is this villa. So they're in the villa. One of the guys from a previous book works for, like, the Bayou Sentinel, and, and, you know, he's got, he's, he's all wiped up from the girl from book two or three. And then we've got another guy who's just like a random ass millionaire who's got a plane <laughs> and they have a live feed like set up with CNN. And so when Helen shows up with our ragtag group of, you know, idiots that can't get the job done. They're like, you're on, you're on TV. <laughs> it's so true. is it true that you've decided to give all, you know, uh, all of the profits of this drug to this little uh, yeah. tribe in, you know, um, a made up country in South America? And she's yeah. like, you dastardly deed doers. You got me. Yeah. And then there's another lady that's just there. Marguerite, that she's yeah. like, she did it. And they actually she did it more than anybody else. And she, Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But so, and, and then they, we have they try our, one last murder, you know. Yeah, then we have our, yeah, Sarah's favorite third act peril where, you know, Helen has grabbed in a house full of fucking people. And yeah, it's a villa that has a bunker. So, you know, maybe. Yeah, it's but big. Helen manages to grab Kat and pull her away and is all like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill you, you bitch. And like, <laughs> Sebastian shows up and Kat gets shot in the arm. Oh, and Sebastian had also to, to like partially lure Helen in. He was like, I'll, I've got your stuff, you know, but before that, I want my $10 million. 
And it, it was hilarious because it went from one, like it went from two hundred fifty thousand dollars to one million dollars to two million dollars to ten million dollars. Well, once you found out and, it was the, the serum of immortality, you got in well better believe. I know, but it's like expensive. The thing is, but he got like there was no discussion. He's like just like ten million dollars. So she, he, you know, he, he puts his account in, and ten million dollars gets you know wire transferred. He saves Cat's life, even though she's been shot in the arm. And she gets pissed off that he took the ten million dollars. <laughs> and yeah, so the end of the book is him having to be like, "Well, I set up five million dollars in a you know like for a fund for the Matumbo tribe, who are going to be rich as shit because of this like you know immortality drug, yeah, and this immortality drug." And she's like, "Well, what about the other five million dollars?" And like rightfully so, he's like, "We can cut keep your ass in instant slack. oatmeal, bitch." Yeah, he's like, "Cut me some slack." you know and then they end up happily ever after and that is a very i feel like we explained it well because that book was it's bananas for the pacing like the pacing yeah, a lot on happens this book, and nothing happens yeah there's a, there's a lot of um yeah highway miles <laughs> in this book a lot of running so many you know? miles, but like, she, yeah i mean you get in any kind of romantic yeah. suspense book because they, if they weren't on the run it wouldn't you know they, they, they have to be in some kind of peril yeah yeah, I mean, and you know, like, and and yeah, and then we'll when we die. Yeah, I guess we can dive into questions. Yeah, so we can question not talk about what we're going to talk about. Talk about yeah, it. right. Um, okay, so number one, big dick energy or big dick energy? I feel like he's supposed to have big dick energy, but he's yeah. not. I wasn't feeling it with him. Uh, okay, so I think I feel like what's interesting about this book is <sighs> Selena Montgomery, Stacey Abrams. What she writes really, really well is like the action thriller stuff. So like she's not good. She's good at describing like actions. She's not good at describing like things or like feelings or like people. So there's a part in the book where like the, the NIH, um director realizes that he's gonna die and it is chilling like that's good was the most yeah. yeah that part of the book was really good and like this i feel like i could describe to you the three doofy bad guys better than i can describe our hero and heroine like yeah. and it know? did have like my personal pet peeve and romances and this is not a, a, a you know slap on her because it's done all the time his denim clad legs the dude's wearing jeans. Say the dude is wearing <laughs> jeans. No human has ever said denim clad legs. <laughs> but yeah, it's, he's that kind of guy. He's got them denim clad legs. <laughs> I got so excited because, again, I feel like I have expressed it on here multiple times. But, like, my all-time favorite trope is this kind of thing. Like, spy or this kind of dude and, like regular lady who just gets like you know pulled into like this other like extra world so i was like yes and we still like i feel like we haven't gotten one that's like amazing at it yet well, you know actually, like, okay in our usual time period they hadn't invented true romantic suspense for some reason which is weird right because it seems really obvious to me again we've got lots of books that kind of come close like i think that that's kind of what they wanted ghost of a chance to be was like what we think of as a modern yeah. romantic suspense book but it wasn't and also like i was terrible but um yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. See, so it's paper. Yeah, and I love like I wanted. Regular. To, I love that kind of creative. Yeah, I wanted right? to like the smart paper. Paper. Yeah, like I mean, he. I mean, he's he's fine. He, you know, he, he just didn't resonate with me. Like it was okay. Again, he's fine, but like I felt like I didn't really know that much about him. Yeah. Yeah, so. I felt like, I could, and I couldn't. Like I'm not talking about describe him physically. Uh, she does describe him physically, but um, describe him like I didn't have a good, you know, I, I his his yeah. voice and his, you know, I didn't I have like a good line him. on him. Yeah, I didn't connect. Like there was more connection like the the young guy Rafe that was in that pack. Like that guy was hot. Like that, that guy was just exhausted by all these other assholes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Enzo and little Ray, like the little yeah. It was I don't know. Like so yeah, Sebastian was fine, but. I feel like too maybe that he was you know because I was reading her um, notes on the book after and she was talking about you know 
him being one of her favorite characters from the previous books that right. maybe it's one of those like people have built a connection with him already yeah and so maybe. yeah and we have not read those books yeah okay would you talk shit with or about the heroine she was, I mean, she was, you know, she's likable, she's smart, she's competent, she's, again, this book is 2006, so we don't really have the same problems that we have with, like, the books that we usually deal with, you know, again, she's an ethnobotanist, she's got terrible taste in food, because it's just oatmeal, but, um, Instant oatmeal. Instant oatmeal. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, I guess if you're, like, I guess it's because they're in the jungles, maybe, I don't know, but I feel like, too. Know. Yeah. Instant oatmeal. Ooh, that's like glue. But, uh, yeah, she's, uh, I liked her a lot, like, uh, in, in, in general, just that she, yeah, she's very competent. Mm -hmm. I also liked that the book was very, um, it didn't just, you know, often in this kind of book, just because there's such a crunch for time and all, you see or experience something that's absolutely terrifyingly awful, and then you just get on with your life. Like, because yeah. you've been so busy running, and uh, you don't get that in this. Like, she sees and experiences something that's awful, and every so often she just has, like, a fucking breakdown about it, which is accurate and and i wish we saw that in more books yeah. like you know she's 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 just like she starts to realize i mean like of course she's been in this terrible um experience but like it, it only starts to kind of sink in of course that her beloved uncle is dead over the course of the book um all that was handled very well i was i was yeah. pleased with that and, and i like that hmm? she never falls for his like lying to protect her business like she's she, like she sees through it you know when he's like oh i just used you she's like you're full of shit you know i liked that too yeah because i really really that's my actual probably least favorite thing in most fiction it, it's, it's yeah. like that variation of the idiot plot where um where I have to tell you how much I fucking hate you and say terrible mean things to you in order to protect you like I, yeah. I it re I find it really upsetting every time that happens in a, you know, in any yeah. kind of media. So I'm really glad that I thought we were going to go there. And instead she was like, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, no. Yeah. I'm not that fucking stupid asshole. You know, I like that. <laughs> um, are the women in this? For, uh, oh, I'm sorry. We, I've got an old sheet. Is it Bechtel the bitch? Um, I like the Abuelita. I can't think of her name. Um, I think I, think I would have read a book about her. Gabrielle yeah, Gabrielle. Was. I would have read a book about yeah. her. She was like a gun tootin', gun tootin' mama. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, she was cool. And she actually had, like, a lot of, um, like, spark to her, you know? I, I don't mean that in, like, a fiery Latina way, but I mean, like, she had a lot, like, going on. She had a past that felt like a real past. She had, um, you know, complicated relationship with, uh, with the uncle. She, and then she, she knew where the other way into the, um, the, the bunker is. So I hope nobody followed her, <laughs> but. Yeah. And, I mean, there's also a point where Kat has, like, a brief phone conversation with, like, her best friend, um, you know, and that was nice, too, just because, again, it's not her just existing in this world as a lone female, you know, yeah. we don't really know anything about that person, that girl, but it's just, you know, to show that she has a connection to somebody, so. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, she couldn't tell her anything, of course, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah I think I, I really liked that aspect of the book, and that like um, it definitely passes the Bechdel test with like um, like flying mm -hmm. colors and characters who have relationships with each other that are different and interesting. Yes. Um, when it comes to consent, is this book more yeah. Robin Thicke or Marvin Gaye? I mean, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, did grab it aside. <laughs> Dick Grab and Assad is very, very, very consensual. I mean, and he's very, you know, Assad, you know, he's very respectful for her. He's also, like, in addition, you know, aside from him, like, let me lie to protect you, you know, he, he realizes that she is smarter than him at a lot of things and, like, you know, lets her take the lead on stuff so it's not him being like no 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 i've got this you know the things that she's better at he allows her to do that so i enjoyed that aspect of it too that it was like they were equal partners and you know it wasn't him having to pull her along or be like you know explain things to her they were both very competent people working together yeah, I like that a lot about it. Um, there was some of that, and I mean, like, uh, <laughs> this doesn't even count as consent. It's just I like, kind of you enjoy it that when you're uh, wrestling for the knife and you end up very much on top of one another, and then you're both like, oh, uh, yeah, kind of forgot about the knife for a minute. 
<laughs> there's well, there's a good bit of that business. Like yeah. yeah. And, and they end up kissing well, in this like uh this way that is, I guess, maybe pseudo consensual, but it's obviously enjoyed by both by both parties. Yeah. <laughs> so I would never count that as non consensual. I just count it as hot. <laughs> yeah. Um how badly are you judging your mom off for reading this book? Well, this is a little bit difficult because like again, it's a more contemporary book. Um I think my mom would have loved it because she like she liked me like the like the capery kind of things you know she liked a good adventure. I think she also would have been like, "What? Where are we? What's happening? How are these people getting to point A to point B?" So <laughs> yeah, there's a point where they obviously they lose their their car, and I'm really not sure how they got to the next place. <laughs> I have no idea. Like there's a burrow at one point. I was like, what? Yes, what, what's yes, happening? There's a burrow. So, I yeah. Um, yeah, I was like. This- Transportation is wild in this, so. Yeah. Um, would Scarlett Johansson be in the movie? No, she would not. <laughs> this well, book is, I mean, again, because, again, it's, it's, it's a different, you know, it's written by, a, you know, a black woman, and our characters are people of color, so it's well represented. And I think she also, it, you know, for having a fictional town, she really did try to, it's a book that doesn't, it doesn't erase people of color from history. It talks about them and it talks about, you know, like the atrocities that happen when the Spanish came and, you know, to South America, it, it, it goes into that. So I really like that aspect of it too. And again, we're in, we're in South of like, there's no just random white people walking around, you know, like everybody there is a person of color. So yeah, and they even, um, so uh, they talk about how the country was founded, um, and, yeah. and it's all, like, um, you know, d- different Inca um, kings yeah. and high priests. And, like, so, in other words, it, it's a very thoughtful, actually believable origin mm-hmm. for this specific country. And it's a made-up country because, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I understand why maybe you don't want to, like, start messing around with, like, a real country and, you know, right. and maybe hurt somebody. But, um, like, it's a, it's a realistically fake country. Yeah. It's, it's not, I mean, it's kind of unfair to compare it to, like, uh, the Ivory Key, where everything else is real, but <laughs> yeah, like she yeah. was, um, yeah, was San whatever is where she was held hostage. Like everything else is like perfectly thought out, but then like it's a fake country that she was in. It's not that kind of fake country. It's a thoughtful fake country. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, this, again, yeah. yeah Scarlett Johansson yeah. would not be asked to be in the movie. Put it that way. She might. Probably, well, she could be Helen. She might be Helen. She'd be Helen. Oh yeah, or, or villain. Um, but yeah, she'd yeah. show up in a very yeah. tailored white suit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah our, you know, our, all of our main characters are, you know, people of color. So yeah. it's it's it was nice to, you know, it was good to read. And it's nice to read a book that talks about the history of a place without just being like, everybody's white, everything's fine. So And just the assumption that everybody is white, you know? Yeah. And yeah, so very refreshing. But then again, it's this is not in our normal time period. So, like, some of yeah. these just don't, you know, thankfully, some of these we can, we can't assume, but we can, you know, yeah. be a little more confident we don't have to worry about. You're not leaving your house looking like that. So there's a lot of like, I feel like she's, I'm going to bring it back to, because it's kind of interesting. This book has a lot of, you can tell the things that inspired her. And again, it's, you know, Romancing the Stone and also Medicine Man. And in Medicine Man, Lorraine Brocco's ass walked around in khaki, like khaki pants and like white tank tops the entire movie and our girl cat is in khakis and tank tops this pretty much like you know if she's not in scrubs she's got she's there's one time that she's in a dress but she's in tank tops for the rest of it and you can tell um, that they are particularly like tight and also like hot yeah. meaning hot yeah. sweaty and hot meaning hot hot like he 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 appreciates her tank tops <laughs> yes and then you know she puts on the 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 one sort of like tradi- it's not even a traditional dress it's just a dress and he's like yep here for that um so the outfits aren't great because it's you know it's basically a running around trying to save your life book and you know and then half the time they're wearing the scrubs but they do she does describe the scrubs a lot there's a lot of scrub <laughs> description I, was like, I don't want a scrub looks like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, the whole bunker thing gets a little a little weird. Yeah, so I think she'd be really well suited for writing like a political intrigue thriller because again, that kind of stuff was really great. But when it was just like in a bunker test tubing, 
I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't really care about the test tubes. I don't care about this, you know, plant, but, um, that's, yeah. So some of the writing was interesting with like pacing wise, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I definitely, yeah, I agree that, um, the, the parts where it didn't have to do with a main uh, couple, like the, the parts that are about like side people, um, were, were like really tight and really, really effective. Um, yeah. and they felt like, and they felt more uniquely voiced to me than, yeah. than like the, just the straight up romance stuff. Yeah. Cause um, I felt like a lot of the romance stuff was like just stuff that you, you know, like there's one point where they're like, they're banging it out and he's like, come fly with me. I was like, it's not, if, if someone, if I was banging somebody and they were like, come fly with me. I'd be like, what? What, what are you saying? Like, that doesn't work for me. But, I mean, again, you know, it's. I think it just shows, I think, the skill that it takes, one, to do, like, thriller action type things. And also just to, like, do romance development, you know? So. And it is very hard, obviously, because if you're writing a romantic suspense book, you have to leave room for all the running. You know, yeah. so you don't have as much uh, time and as much space to to teach you to care about these characters, which so you I mean right. you've got even less less room for it than if they were just like um I don't know like meeting at a Christmas party kind of you know kind yeah. of romance. So like there, it takes a lot of skill to juggle those those two things. Yeah, and I mean she did it perfectly well. I I just uh, I liked the thriller part better. I guess. Yes, exactly. I think yeah she was much more because again that part where that director gets like that scene is super chilling the part where mm -hmm. gabriella is like being you know you got this little yeah, again little abuelita being threatened by um you know armed men very chilling because you're like oh god i'm very concerned for her mm -hmm. um and then it's you know, funny like it resolves in a funny way yeah. and that's effective yeah. too which is kind of hard to do yeah yeah so uh was your 12 year self a dog year in any pages eh. i mean it's fine. Probably, the bang like, was okay. Yeah. It's, it I wasn't. Mean, I yourself was, was not picky. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, exactly. But it's, you know, again, come fly with me. Um, but it's fine. It's not, it's not overly graphic or anything. It's, I think, like you said, the kissing and the wrestling around was sexier than the actual doing it. Cause they're like, they're on some like janky cot in a, test tube bunker as i'm gonna call it so <laughs> the foreplay is pretty good yeah you know? it's pretty good yeah um what pairs nicely with a dumpster fire it's not a dumpster fire so that's not fair no. um you know that's really for for our more usual uh you know stuff i don't I know i think what pairs nicely with it is a donation to the georgia runoff <laughs> i think, I think that you you're right it. i think yeah. that, yes i think that you should have like a little nightcap of donation and then yeah. maybe maybe a brunch like a bottomless donation yeah a bottomless brunch donation um yeah that's what i think you know social justice pairs nicely with this so I agree. <laughs> but yeah it was it was it was fun i'm glad we did it it was you know again it was interesting to read you know I, I think she should, as she becomes like secretary of state, just in her spare time, write, you know, thrillers and stuff like that. That would be. It was amazing. weird knowing that it was Stacey Abrams. You know? Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it's not my favorite book because again, I just like the pacing on it was strange, but she, you know, like I said, I, if, if she was like, Hey, I've got to write some kind of like, John Grisham esque version of the firm in Washington, I would buy that shit immediately because I'd be like, yeah. oh, she murders people so good. That's the thing. She murders people crazy well. <laughs> yeah. 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 I would watch, yeah. I would read some more murder from Stacey Abrams. <laughs> yes. So, all right. Well, I guess, well, again, um, we always forget to do this. We're always terrible about our closings. We got to come up with like a closing, so yeah, like a catchphrase, like a or know. no, just but also like you know, follow us at <laughs> we never bodicetipplers.com, our Patreon, which is you know, our Patreon, I Patreon. can't remember.com slash bodice tipplers. Yeah, on Twitter, we are yeah. B tipplers, yes, and Facebook and Instagram, bodice tipplers. Yes. So, and we're hilarious. <laughs> 
on our yeah we in the podcasting 101 they're always like end with an action so this is mm -hmm. us ending with an action but you know yeah. what again this action i'm gonna say give to the action fund and to the georgia runoff that should yes. be your action forget us yes and stacy abrams uh um nonprofit is a fair fight yes fair fight because again if if georgia can swing you know to democrat senators then Kamala Harris gets to shove it in Mitch McConnell's face oh all the God. time. Uh, and just think about the sexual, you know what? Think about dog ear in the pages of that kind of sexual satisfaction. So, <laughs> yeah, that would be good. I would like to see Lindsey Graham's face. Yeah, oh we could masturbate that all day. All, all day, the all time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, everybody, take, take a breath, stop doom scrolling, go watch something fun and enjoy your thanksgiving with nobody else <laughs> enjoy <yeah>. your quarantine <laughs> for thanksgiving and uh, oh have a God. good time and uh, follow it up with a shot and a chaser of donating to the georgia runoff yeah <laughs> all right y'all have a great holiday and we will catch you again in december hey y'all uh, courtney here um just to give you a quick word about romancing the runoff which we kind of discuss in this episode if you're not really following on social media this is organized by various different romance authors who care about the future of the country and are inspired by fellow romance author stacy abrams they're raising funds to help support the georgia senate runoffs by supporting fair fight the new georgia project and black voters matter um, basically, this is an auction, and if you go to www.romancingtherunoff.com, you can find out more. Um, we have a couple of items that are up for auction, and they have a bunch of really cool stuff from different authors. Um, I know Neil Gaiman, Courtney Milan, Sarah McLean, and a, several others are have donated. They've so far raised three hundred twenty two thousand dollars um and they also have smaller items in there i think they have of magnets and things like that so just check them out and if you miss the cutoff you can always go to those organizations again new georgia project fair fight or black motors voters matter and you can make a donation thanks hope everybody has a thing happy thanksgiving Bodice Tipplers is part of the Frolic Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcast.